<clears throat> Alright guys, so we've been uh, working on the bad trade triumph that we got. So, if you guys remember last time we had worked on this, uh, the clutch was slipping really bad. So, um, I did a couple things, just to be unsure before I started doing a bunch of work, was uh, I bought a new clutch cable. Uh, I measured the old one and the new one, and they were the same length. So we know that the clutch cable is not stretch. I went ahead and installed the new one just because that it wasn't very expensive and it was a special order part, so I couldn't return it. Um, plus, the old one had a little like fraying on it, so whatever. Went ahead and replaced it. Um, the next thing was is I drained the Rotella out. So keep in mind that like Rotella, even though it's like considered a diesel oil. It is the right specs for a motorcycle. And I used it on my previous Triumph with no problems. Uh, I went ahead and bought some actual 4T motorcycle oil um, just to see. And it made zero difference. Once the bike warmed up, it just started slipping really bad. So um, as you guys can see, I've already taken it apart. And so we're going to go over here and we're going to look at the service limit of this. So the service limit of the clutch is... 2.8 millimeter now i don't have my caliper here to measure but the i have a, another way of measuring it and that's actually using two us dimes so two us dimes puts it at 2.7 millimeter so it's right under the service limit thickness and unfortunately it's hard to see i'm gonna see if we can put it like this as you can see the friction disc is like a a hair above the two dimes, like literally a hair. So without my caliper, like it's almost like by feel, um, it's like literally almost the same. So that tells me that the friction discs are bad. Now here's one other thing, one in other in inclination that we had that it is the, the friction disc. When I opened the, when I drained the oil out, the Rotella, mind you, I had just changed it and I don't even, I probably have no more than 10 miles on it. When I drained it out and uh, I opened up the cover, I mean, just the smell of burnt clutch was just like apparent. So I'm pretty positive that we've got a bad clutch. We're pretty sure it's the friction disc or bad. Um, I haven't measured all of them, I just grabbed one. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is basically I'm going to measure against all the friction discs, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the same. When I pulled out the uh, stack here, I was looking, or when I initially pulled out the stack, I was looking at it, and you can see that there's wear marks, which is pretty common, but I didn't see any bluing. So that usually tells, that tells me that, you know, this clutch was just in bad shape, but it wasn't like slipped completely. Again, remember when I first bought the bike, it was extremely low on oil. What I drained out was like literally one quart. So that tells me that, you know, the clutch disc is bad. So just to be sure, I'm going to go through and I'll do it off camera and I'm going to measure every individual clutch disc and then uh, inspect each of the the uh, plates just to see if there's any bluing, um, like to actually look at it. But that's kind of where we're at. Like I said, that first, the rearmost um, friction disc looks really bad. So I'm going to assume that the rest of them are bad, but let's verify it. All right. So I checked it all, all the clutch plates or all the friction plates, excuse me, um, have the same thickness, which is like slightly over the two dime method. So I'm pretty sure it's over the service limit. The next thing is, is that the service manual also tells you to smell it and they all smell terrible, like burnt clutch. So these are called um, the friction discs, or excuse me, this is the anti judder spring, but this is the friction disc, and these are the plain disc here. And so I took a look at the plain disc, and they all look pretty good. So they don't have any bluing or anything like that, nothing that looks really concerning. There's no warpage either, so um, all that looks good. So what we're going to do is basically order friction plates. Now I'm going to look and find out if the friction plates alone, the set of friction plates, or the complete assembly, which one's more cost effective because like you know if it's a couple more dollars for the complete assembly i'd rather do that so i'm going to order these um i'm also going to order the new uh there's three clutch springs here we're going to order three of those um just to get those new unfortunately there's not like a service limit on the springs but we're already here i'm sure the springs aren't going to be much more money so uh springs this assembly uh the gasket here a couple crush washers and 
fingers crossed we'll be ready to ride after that this one will finally be up for rent um but yeah so it's kind of like i said normal wear, not really normal wear and tear but it is wear and tear of of an item that you know it's a clutch it, they do go bad unfortunately this really came down to just poor maintenance um but it is what it is, you know, again, there's only one person I can blame, which is myself for not test riding it. Uh, but yeah, so a couple hundred dollars, uh, a couple hours of labor and some diagnostic and hopefully we'll be back on the road and ready to rock. One other thing I want to talk about is the bolts for the clutch cover. Um, they are different lengths. So the trick that I use um, is just using a piece of cardboard and it's basically in the order that it needs to go. As you can see, I put the bracket on as well. There's actually two brackets, but this was a placeholder just to, you know, that way if I ever get lost, I can figure it out. Um, it's hard to see here, but I actually used a razor blade to cut an arrow for the 12 o'clock position. And this one bolt signifies, you know, the top of the middle cover. And it's a, it's a simple trick. If you guys got lots of bolts and projects that take a few weeks to do. So for instance, like this one, anything that I order from the local dealer takes a few weeks to get. Um, so, you know, trying to go back and remember all this in two weeks time, considering that I am, you know, what I do for a living, it can be hard to remember. So stuff like this always works really well. Plus, you know, with this, it's really hard, even if, you know, it gets knocked over, there's a very good chance you may lose a couple of bolts, but not all of them. So at least you don't have to figure out all the bolts, you know, just some of them, but just a little tip, tip there for you guys. 